Just like in cars, shifting is becoming a thing of the past for motorcycles as well. Uh, a lot of the newer electrics are going strictly to uh, fully automatic. Uh, the Rikers are fully automatic. So I'm fortunate to have the Spider, which has the paddle shifter option. Uh, you can add clutches to them as well. Now, uh, in this video, hopefully I'll cover things for the experienced riders. And for those of you are, are new to it completely, I do have things in here that we're going to cover as far as shifting uh, up and down. We're also going to talk about the kill or the engine kill switch. Uh, and then putting it in reverse, which a lot of people, including myself, had trouble with when we first start out. And then talking a little bit about the pedal commander. So hopefully everybody will enjoy this video and there's something for you. Uh, if you do need to reference this video in the future, I am putting a timestamp with what times and what sections are in the description down below like I do all my videos. So that way you can quickly reference the spots uh, that you need to refer to. Hope you guys enjoy this week's video. So if you notice everything's off, I'm going to turn the key on, let it rev up, put my foot on brake, you go and start it. Alright, so when we started, you notice it had first gear, then it went to neutral. Alright, so you can shift and reverse, you can go to first, just by simply pressing the plus down, and then to go in reverse, you press the top button, that's an R, and then the minus here in the back on the paddle shifter and it goes directly to reverse. Now, I don't like doing that a lot because a lot of times it does kind of slam into gear or it feels like it slams into gear. So I personally like to be in neutral. So if you notice, I press this, it went back to one, I would go forward normally, but for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go to neutral. So I'm just gonna press the negative down here. And it is best always to not be rolling uh, in any direction and also have the bike in neutral is about the best way to shift into reverse and most of the time you're going to be shifting when you uh, have the bike stopped and then you're getting ready to leave so this is kind of a normal way of shifting in reverse for you so if you notice we're in neutral we're gonna all you simply do is just I have my foot on my brake by the way push the reverse button down and then push the minus in the back and if you notice it uh, made a clunking sound if you can hear that on the video if not it kind of clunks um, I've had the spider for two years. I've also talked to a lot of people and it feels like it slams in the gears every now and then This is one of those times So if you notice the bikes in reverse just gonna take it off a of parking brake and again uh, You can do this with parking brake on or off. I'm just pretending like we have just started the bike So everything's good to go give it a little bit of gas and I am backing out All right, so now we're just gonna simply shift into first gear Click on that, we're good to go. Now we've just pulled in, we're in first gear. Uh, we've just stopped the bike, we need to put it in reverse. This is just where if you had to turn around real quick, just press it, press the minus, shifts into reverse, and you're good to go. Back out again. I stopped it on the brake, shift it into first, there we go. Now when shifting up, all you simply do is just press the little plus feature, or the paddle shifter. Now if you notice, I am in first gear, and I'm going slow, and I'm continuously pressing on the plus. Well that is one of the good features about this, if you're new to shifting completely and you've always used an automatic your life, car, motorcycle, whatever. Uh, it will not let you shift until you get into a gear that it can handle or an RPM that you can handle So right now if you notice I'm driving around I'm gonna get up into a little bit better gear And I just shifted into second So that's one good feature if you're not used to the bike uh, you do not have to worry about really shifting it uh, improperly it will not let you overshift again I'm going too slow pressing on that as many times as I want doesn't matter it's not going to shift all 
let's say I'm gonna slow down you notice the bike automatically shifts down my hand is nowhere on the controls I'm not doing anything I'm waving it for you so you can see that I'm not doing anything but let's say you're out riding and you need to shift down so let's get it up here in pretty good gear fourth fifth sixth let's say I'm in the sixth gear just cruising right along and I need to shift down to pass somebody now I can just put on the throttle and it goes in sixth gear but if I need to pass I just simply press the minus and it shifts down for me say we get in third gear throttle it and then we're good to pass and just shift up now one of the other features is when you have it in eco mode if you notice down here there's a little arrow that's telling me I need to shift to stay in a good range for where my gas mileage will be. So if you notice I've shifted to fifth, there's no arrow, keep a little bit of gas, I'm going up an RPM, and now it's saying I need to shift up to maintain fuel efficiency. Now when you're off of eco mode, it does not give you the arrows for shifting, uh -huh. simply just lets you shift whenever you want to shift. You can take it all the way up. Uh -huh. The red line for this, or when you don't want to over rev, is around uh, 8,000 RPMs where you want to be careful of revving. Now what I've noticed for me uh, on my bike is when I'm around the 3500-4000 RPM which is right there and I shift, my bike shifts the smoothest around those RPMs. Uh, I've noticed whenever I have a passenger on it also doesn't bounce them around a whole lot. Now let's talk about the kill switch or the engine kill switch. Uh, I don't use this a whole lot just because whenever I stop the bike I turn the key off. But I'm going to turn the key on. If you notice it ribbed up. I'm going to go through the process of trying to start it. It will not start. Press that down. Go through the process again. And it starts up. So what this is designed for, one of the uses, uh, to me there is two uses, whether they say it in the book or not, uh, or people talk about it or not. Uh, one of the uses is if whenever you go to stop and you're ready to park your bike, turn everything off, you hit the kill switch, kills the engine, just like this. Alright, I don't like doing that. Uh, there's a little bit of a backfire on mine whenever I've done it in the past, and I just feel like it's not a good way to do it. I like turning off the key. Alright, so for me, the kill switch or the engine stop switch is designed for this. Say you're going, something happens to your engine, you're going to be riding around, it kills the engine. It still rolls the bike, you've still got brakes, and you've still got steering. So it is a safe way to stop your bike. Just remember if you have to start it back up to put that back on. I suggest to anybody that has a bike to play with it experience what all these buttons and stuff are for. Uh, that's what my series is going to be learning to ride. I'm going to be showing you basically all the buttons I can and all the tweaks of the motorcycle when you're riding. So again let's experience the kill switch again. I'm going to go a little faster this time. We're riding around. Something happens to the bike. Get in a safe environment. Don't be in the middle of an interstate when you do this. Rev it up. Kill the engine. and it just rolls. If you notice, the more speed you are, the longer it takes for it to shut off. The reason for that being is the faster you're going, of course it doesn't want you to lose control. So when your RPMs go down to a slower speed, it will then shut off the engine. Pretty cool feature. And it does the same going uphill. I killed it. When I get to a safe speed, it cuts the engine off. No matter what the speed is going, if you're going too slow, it'll kill the engine immediately. If you're going fast, say you're going 60 or 80 or whatever, it turns off the engine um, whenever it's at a safe speed. So it does kind of kill everything. It's not going to let you rev the engine up and continue going fast or anything. It's just going to maintain it so all the power steering, power brakes, and all that good stuff 
does not cancel out on you. Now when using the pedal commander, you want to make sure that you're not on the throttle and you're not shifting whenever you change the settings in the pedal commander. Do so whenever you're stopped, that is the best option, or your bike will probably go into limp mode or it'll have some kind of error message on the screen for you. You don't want that happening. With the pedal commander, I've had no issues whatsoever. I haven't had it go in limp mode at all, but I do not switch it whenever I go in and out of gears and also when I'm using the throttle. I always plan ahead of my trip. And just for those that are curious, I am going to do a follow-up review soon on the pedal commander. But basically, I keep it in city at plus two mode is uh, what I've been using it at. So I don't really need to shift it much anymore or change the settings whenever I am riding around.